the small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other, who know that following the science and stepping up to protect each other is the best way to continue to ensure our freedoms, our rights, our values as a the country. The government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act, authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. This order covers both personal and corporate accounts. Third, we are directing Canadian financial institutions to review their relationships with anyone involved in the illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or CSIS. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. At least one other Premier said that invoking this act is like putting oil on a raging fire. Words along those lines. Do you think you're inflaming the situation even more by invoking this? My focus is on Canadians who've had a long two years, who've been through a pandemic, who've lost loved ones, who've seen businesses struggle, who've lost jobs, and just want this to be over. They're exhausted. We're all exhausted. We're all frustrated by the pandemic. But those people who disagree with the measures that governments put in place to keep Canadians safe, to ensure that we would make it through this pandemic better than many of our peer countries. Those people have gone from uh, protesting and disagreeing with those measures to limiting and blocking the freedoms of their fellow citizens, hurting jobs, hurting lives and livelihoods, endangering public safety, and weakening our country, not just right now, but for times to come in the eyes of our most important trading partners. If you joined the protests because you're tired of COVID, you now need to understand that you are breaking laws. The consequences are becoming more and more severe. You don't end up losing your license, end up with a criminal record, which... I'm asking the Prime Minister to stop dividing, stigmatizing and name-calling people he disagrees with. Let them know that he listens and that he hears them, but he refuses to do that. Today we are voting on a Conservative motion, a reasonable motion that asks the government to present a plan for a reopening by the end of the month. This should be a time of optimism yeah. and joy for Canadians, yeah. not division and fear. Can Canadians count on the Prime Minister to do the right thing and today stand up with us, support our motion and give Canadians the hope that they deserve so much? Yeah. Hopeful vision for public life isn't a naive dream. It could be a powerful force for change. If Canadians are to trust their government, their government needs to trust Canadians. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2015. These people, very often misogynistic, racist, women haters, science deniers, the fringe. Same Prime Minister six years later as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? You're right, Honourable Prime Minister. 
Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. I've seen the descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out, and I have never been made to feel less, except for today when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology. I'd like an apology, and I think he owes an apology to all members of this House. Come here, my man. Come here, my man. So, the media says uh, there's racism here. Is there racism? Okay, let me tell you something about that. You, it's funny that you ran into me of all people. Apparently. <laughs> okay? I was here the first day at Ground Zero. I actually spoke on stage. I actually saw the guy with a swastika flag. So it was a real thing. It was it. a real thing. But this is what they didn't tell you. He was going around with the flag saying, is this what you want for our country? Really? This is what Trudeau is going to turn our flag into if we allow this draconian fascism to continue. Is this what you want the Maple Leaf to re be replaced by? Can I ask you, you what your name, sir? Yeah, Sandy Williams. Yeah, we come from a little town called Peninsula, Alberta. Uh, pretty close to Slave Lake, Alberta. Uh, so we got on this journey here. We started on the 23rd of January and uh, had no idea what we were getting ourselves into to come all the way across from, from home. We, we, we noticed right away when we were coming across on how divided, what we thought the divide of a country was we realized real quick, like day two, on how together our country stands. And it was it became more powerful as we each day went on. And once we got over here to see what we got to see with the people that have came out to support us here is amazing. And, it, and uh, yeah, wouldn't change it for the world. Exactly what we, we uh, believed in our heads. Know, knew in our heart that that was not the country that they're trying to portray being all divided and, you know believing in the numbers being everybody being on different ends of the spectrum on things what we understand now and we know for the truth is that we're together we're standing in this all together understanding that we need our freedoms and uh brings us to today we're on uh i guess the 15th today eh? and uh all we wanted to do since we got here was to talk to, our, to the leaders of, of, uh, of power that uh, somehow the people are in unison that they want the freedoms back and all they wanted all we wanted since we got here was a conversation to, to be had about that and that hasn't happened and uh, no conversations have went on with any of the leaders to be and we're now in uh, in a situation where they're gonna use force upon us today it sounds like they've uh, they started removing kids out of the streets. They've uh, uh, want us to get our kids out of here, which that's what we plan on doing. Um, yeah, it's become basically uh, surreal that, that, that the government, when the people have spoken, they're not here to listen. So I guess that's where we're going to have to... We know we're standing on the right side of history. And um, we came here peacefully. We're going to leave here peacefully. And... Well, what else can you say? It just I uh, I understand we have some really really great Canadians that are wearing different uniforms of all different colors today, and they have a job to do. But we're all Canadians first, and we do our job second, right? And history is going to be made, and, it, and it, it's their move. And we've basically been standing here very firm for one thing and one thing all. A very solid message. We want our freedoms back, and what all. There's a pretty good chance. Well, I think it's inevitable at this point. But uh, I'll probably be going somewhere tomorrow where I'll be getting three square meals a day. <laughs> and that's okay. I, um, I'm okay with that. And I want you to know that I'm not afraid. Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need
We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness than I've ever seen are just flooding in to the city. The pedestrian traffic is just unreal that's been heading in here. And just the tensions have eased up with the police at the front line at the Chateau. It's just two fences and now maybe 1 20th of the police that were there originally. Once I get the toes warmed up, I'll be out and it's been that kind of back and forth, manning the line all night. But guys, they're shook up. The police were shook up by having those brutal tactics used on us, trampling uh, an elderly woman and trampling another guy, and batons used on people for absolutely no reason for a peaceful, uh, lawful protest that was only deemed unlawful by treating words as violence to, to invoke this emergency measure. So it's just a, an insane world that Mayor Watson and Chief Bell have have brought on themselves and I think the police are questioning it and I damn well reminded a ton of them and the nicest way I could talk to your superior officers let them know that you didn't sign up to become Gestapo hey brother you didn't sign up to become this Gestapo for despots that you guys are here to protect us and uphold your oath and I you can see it in their eyes and there's some people that are going there down there raging out because you know they're they're coming after watching all the news and and seeing the psyop of cops at their worst drive, dragging that old guy out of his car. But there's way more of us reminding them that, guys, that's the old world. Saying fuck you to cops even after they trample us is not going to get us anywhere. We have to go positive on this one. So I'm going to head back out there and keep the regulation up of that crowd because we regulate our own. We've done it from the beginning. But there's many people doing it right now. So it's a, just a great night. It's been a... Whoo! Roller coaster ride of emotions throughout the day. I thought like mass arrests were imminent by 2 p.m. and and that has just flipped to just zero tension right now. If they're building up some big flanking maneuver because it's Psyop City, so be it. We've always been ready for it, but Jesus, right now it's feeling pretty good. What in the world are you waiting for? It's your moment. You've got a huge number of Canadians occupying Ottawa expressing their dismay with the suspension of our charter rights in the face of this so-called emergency, our prime minister has literally abandoned the city, run away, as far as I can tell, citing security concerns because I think he believes his own propaganda about the nature of the people who are sitting in Ottawa and then lying about it justifying it as a consequence of being exposed to COVID, despite the fact he's double vaccinated and tested negative. You're not going to get a better opportunity. This is your moment, conservatives, in Canada. You could come out and say to the population, say to the people who are desperate to hear this, that we can have our lives return to normal. 
and that there's still some danger, but that we've got this with competent leadership and care. We could return our lives to what they should be. We could have our country back. We could move forward into the future in a normal manner. So gentlemen, Premier Scott Moe, Jason Kenney, Doug Ford, you're good men. Aaron O'Toole, you're the leader of the opposition. Man, even the NDP leader came out and said that the truckers were essentially a bunch of white supremacists for, for all intents and purposes. The opposition, your opposition, our government is in disarray. And the people are doing everything they can to make their wants known. Guys, reassure Canadians. Remove these mandates that are crippling our businesses and interfering with our private lives and stopping us from being able to travel. Seize the day.